Hello, this is Wes at Bad Seed Games, and we're going to continue where we left off from the previous tutorial. Now, previously we had set up the radar system to be able to cast a ray into the scene, figure out if it had hit something, what it had hit, and to set the condition accordingly. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a range finding device. So, on the radar item, let's go add new finite state machine. Okay. Now, let's call this one Rangefinder. Okay, now there's going to be two basic states that we're going to use. So let's set up the first one. And in this one, let's call it in range. Now, there are going to be three actions that we're going to use. The first off is going to be get distance because we're need going to need to calculate the distance between the radar and the target. So the first object is the owner, which is radar. The target is going to be the target. And we're going to have to store the results, so let's put it in distance. And it's going to be a float variable, because it's going to have a decimal point. So distance, and it's going to be every frame. Okay, the next action that we need to do is we need to compare distance and let's add in a new one, which is our range. The range is going to be how far this radar can look. Basically, how far is its visual range. Now we're going to set it to, let's say, 20 units. Let's go back in here and what we're going to do, since we're going to be comparing two float values, let's go float compare. You can find this in the logic subsection. Now what it does is it compares two floats and it gives you an equal, a less than, or a greater than event that you can choose. Now you can also increase the tolerance, such as if you want to give it a little bit of fuzziness, like a plus minus variance, this is where you can add it in. But for our purposes, we're not going to use that. So the first value that we need to test is the distance that we extracted in this action. And the next one is going to be our range. OK, so since we're in range, if the distance gets to be greater than the range, then we trigger the event. But let's define our events. So we need two events, in range and out of range. But since we're on the in range, we need to fire off the out of range. So if it's greater than, it's out of range. And we want to check this every frame, since this is going to be sitting on this action. Okay, now let's, since we've pretty much got this almost set up exactly the way we need, let's just copy it and paste it. We do not want to change the start state. You could if you wanted to, but we don't need to. Let's name this out of range and change this event to the in range. So if it's in range and it goes out of range, go to the out of range. If it's out of range and it goes in range, it goes to the in range. And we need to change this. So since this one is now testing if the distance is going to be less than the range, that means that we want to fire off the in range action. So let's give it a run. Okay, notice how down here, oops, <laughs> watch these, uh, watch this area and you'll see it go. So out of range, in range, and out of range. Okay, so it's doing what we need it to. Now we need to change, tell it to change some information. Now since we have a condition holder on this basic enemy, Let's add one more condition. 
player in range. And again, this is going to be a Boolean value. So let's add that in there. So let's go back here. There's one more action we need to do. We need to use the set FSM, since we're going to be setting in a finite state machine a Boolean value. Okay, since the action that since the uh, value is not on this item, again we have to specify the game object. We're going to put the enemy in here. If the finite state machine is in conditions, and the variable is going to be player in range. Now, since this is the in range, let's set it to true, and we want to do this every frame. So next, let's just copy this action and paste it over here. But the difference is we want to change the value so that it's false. So let's go in here, make sure that we can see this in the inspector, and watch the space. So we can now calculate whether the player is in range and visible. And here we go. So, too far away. He's within range, and it's now visible. Okay, now we're going to be continuing in the next video, but I hope this has answered a few questions, and if you like this video, feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. Have a good one.